So today, we're going to talk about solving equations again, but this time we're going to look at equations that involve multiplication and division. So the rules of the game, how do you solve these equations? Very similar to what we did with adding and subtracting. One, we always want to make sure that we simplify each side so we know what simplify means. Two, what we do to one side, we always do to the other. The third, the most important goal is to isolate the variable. In other words, we need to get the letter by itself. And finally, we never ever skip the check. We check by substituting our answer back into the equation. Make sure that you're writing these rules down into your notes. You need these. All right, so let's look at a couple problems. So we want to solve this equation. Negative 8y equals negative 9, 6. In other words, that means negative 8 times some number y equals negative 96. We know it's a multiplication problem, so we are going to solve by doing the opposite. If it's a multiplication problem, we're going to isolate by doing division because the opposite of multiplication is division. So we're going to start by at the equal sign, drawing a line down. That shows our balance, two sides of the equation. Please write this in your notes. We're going to come to the left side of the equation, and I'm going to use a fraction bar to show the sign divide. I'm going to divide by negative 8 because negative 8 divided by negative 8 is going to give me a positive 1y. That's going to isolate the y. But if I divide by negative 8 on the left, then I have to divide by negative 8 on the right. And look at how I'm showing the work. You need to show it the same way. Now, this means I need to divide negative 96 by negative 8. So I'm going to do this division. I know a negative divided by a negative is positive. So negative 8 divides into 9 once. 8 times 1 is 8. Do my subtraction, that becomes a 1. I bring down the 6. 8 divides into 16 two times. So therefore, I believe y equals a positive 12. Now, what's so important is that I don't skip this check. If I believe y is 12, I can substitute it back in. So I've got negative 8 times what I believe y is now, 12 should equal negative 96. Well, now I have to do this math. 12 times 8, 16, 96. 96, negative 96 equals negative 96. My answer must be right. We can't ever, ever skip the check. All right, let's take a look at one more just for practice. This means 9 times b equals negative 117. So that means I need to divide this left side by 9. Draw my line down to show two sides of the equation. If I divide the left by 9, I have to divide the right by 9, and I have to solve for b. So I actually have to do this division. Negative 117 divided by 9. I know a positive and a negative is going to give me a negative. 9 divides into 11 once, so that gives me a 9. I subtract, that gives me a 2. Bring down my 7. 9 divides into 27 three times. So b should equal negative 13. If I'm correct, it's going to be evident in the check. So 9 times negative 13 should equal negative 117. I have to do this math to check. So negative 13 times 9, 7, carry the 2, 117 negative. Sweet. Negative 117 equals negative 117. If your check doesn't work, you've got to go back to your work. Now, here's a problem that has an extra step. If we remember with our rules, we always need to simplify the expression. So over here on this left side, I can combine like terms. 5n, negative 5n minus 3n gives me negative 8n equals 48. So how am I going to solve? It's a multiplication problem, so I'm going to divide. I'm going to divide the left by negative 8. That means I'm going to divide the right by negative 8. My negative 8 divided by negative 8 is going to leave me just with a beautiful n. 48 divided by a negative 8 is going to be negative 
6. Now I need to do my check. I can use the simplified expression. So negative 8 times negative 6 should equal a positive 48. This will equal positive 48 equals a positive 48. Perfect. So my check works. If we take a look at this problem, it should look a little different to you. This isn't a multiplication problem. This now is a division problem. So we have k divided by negative 15 equals negative 6. So in other words, what number divided by negative 15 is going to give me negative 6? Same rules. What I do to the right, I do to the left. I draw my line down to show both sides. So in this case, if it's a division problem, I need to multiply. So I'm going to multiply by negative 15 over 1. Because if you remember your rules with fractions, these two negative 15s are going to cancel each other out, which is going to just leave me with k isolated. And that's my goal. But if I multiply by negative 15 on the left, you got it. I have to multiply by negative 15 on the right. So if I do this math, negative 15 times 6, 0 carry my 3, gives me a negative 90. So negative 90 divided by negative 15, I'm sorry, positive 90. Um, a positive 90. So if I check this, I'm at positive 90 divided by negative 15 should give me a negative 6. I have to check this math, so I've got to do the division. So I'm going to divide negative 15 into 90, and 15 times 90, I mean 15 divided into 90 is going to go 6 times, because 15 times 6, 0 carry my 3, gives me a 90. So therefore, negative 6 equals negative 6. Boom. All right, one more chance to look at this kind of problem, and then you're going to try it on your own. If I've got P divided by 14, I'm going to multiply this by 14 over 1. They'll cancel out. That'll isolate my P. If I multiply by 14 on the left, I have to multiply by 14 on the right. So 14 times 5 is going to give me seven, uh, 70. So I believe P equals a negative 70. I must do my check, so that means negative 70 divided by 14 should equal negative 5. Well, if I do my check, 14 into negative 70, I think it's 5 times. So if I do 14 times 5, 0 carry my 2, it is in fact 70. So my answer must be right. So here are a couple for you to try. First one, g divided by 9 equals negative 12. Isolate your g. Again, when we look at this problem, we see that it's a multiplication, I mean a division problem. So we multiply to solve. We multiply by 9 over 1. That's going to cancel out my 9s. That'll leave me with g. But if I multiply by 9 on the left, I multiply by 9 on the right, and I have to do that math, which is going to give me 18, 9, 108. So it's a negative 108. Now that's what I think, but I'm going to prove it with my check. So g is now negative 108 divided by 9, hopefully equals negative 12. If I do my division, 9 dividing into negative 108, 9 goes into 10 once, that's 9. 1, bring down my 8, and that goes in 12 times. So it equals negative 12. My check is correct. Try this problem. Remember, this is a multiplication problem. Think about opposites. All right, so I need to isolate my C. I'm going to divide by negative 6, because negative 6 divided by negative 6 is going to cancel out and leave me with a perfect C. But if I divide by negative 6 on the left, I'm going to divide by negative 6 on the right. I have to do this division, so negative 6 is dividing into 72. 6 goes into 7 once. Bring down my 1, bring down my 2. 6 goes into 12 twice. All right, so C should equal negative 12. Now, I hope I'm right, but I'm going to figure it out by doing my check. So I'm going to substitute in. I now have negative 6 times negative 12 should equal 72. 
So I know a negative times a negative is a positive, so I'm good there. 12 times 6, 12, carry my 1, 72, yep. Ne 72 equals a positive 72. I must have done it right. Last problem for you to try. Um, looks like you have to simplify first. Good luck. So when I combine my like terms, 3x minus 7x is negative 4x, which equals negative 44. It's a multiplication, so I'm going to divide to solve. I divide by negative 4. That isolates my x. That means I have to divide by negative 4 on the right. Negative by a negative is a positive. Negative 44 divided by 4 should give me a positive 11. When I do my check, I'm going to use the simplified equation. So negative 4 times 11 should equal negative 44. Negative 4 times 11, negative 44 equals negative 44. Perfect. So the most important thing, guys, you must show your work. You must do your checks. You will always know whether you are right or wrong. You did a great job today.